finding direction. Hey there, stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regas, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the sky tonight. Hey James, are you seeking direction in your life? Uh, why? Have I seemed more aimless than usual? No, I'm talking about how the stars can tell you where north, south, oh. east, and west are. Oh, <laughs> this is a great month to share our tips for finding Polaris, aka the North Star. Exactly. And along the way, we'll show you the Big Dipper, Little Dipper, and Cassiopeia, the three major constellations of the northern sky. And we'll visit a flying horse, too. Okay, we have our sky set to any night this week at 9 p.m. facing north. Since we're facing north, the North Star should be there somewhere, but uh, where is it? Contrary to popular opinion, the North Star is not the brightest star in the sky. That honor belongs to Sirius, the dog star. In fact, Polaris ranks about 48th in brightness, and through city light pollution, it's just barely visible. Well, what makes Polaris so darn special? Let's fly up there to take a closer look. Polaris resides almost directly over our North Pole. So, as the Earth rotates, causing day and night, and the daily motions of the stars, the North Star barely moves. That means this star shines in the northern sky all night, making it the perfect stellar sentinel. As the world turns and the night goes on, the stars appear to rotate in a counterclockwise motion. This motion gives us the appearance that the sky spins once a day with a pivot point at Polaris. Of course, it's the Earth that's spinning, not the sky. Since the Little Dipper has some very faint stars, finding the North Star can be tough. But never fear, the other Dipper is here. The Big Dipper is much more distinct, and you can find it about to scoop the ground in the early evening. The ancient Greeks and some Native American groups called these stars a big bear. But have you ever seen a bear with a tail like that? Looks more like a raccoon to me. Anyway, we're now going to star hop using more notable stars in the Big Dipper as pointers. Connect the dots of the two stars at the end of the Big Dipper spoon. They're called Murak and Dube. Continue that line up and to the right, and bingo, they'll point you right to Polaris. We're not done with the Big Dipper's pointer stars yet. If you go from the Big Dipper to the North Star, keep going, because you will run into a star at the top of a W-shaped constellation. The star's name is Calf, and now you've discovered Cassiopeia the Queen. Can you see the beautiful, boastful queen sitting on her throne? Uh, no. Uh, no, me neither. So, I picture these stars as her crown glittering in the northeastern sky. Ah, that's better. And Cassiopeia is easy to find as you hop across the heavens. The distance between the Big Dipper and Polaris is the same as the distance from Polaris to Cassiopeia. But wait, there's more. Hop from the Big Dipper's spoon to Polaris, on to Cassiopeia, and make one more hop. This will take you to the corner of a huge square of four stars. And we've landed on one corner, a star called Alpharats. This is really the body of Pegasus the flying horse. Uh, let's see the picture. E wow, uh, that definitely takes some imagination. And he's flying upside down. It may be hard to picture, but it's easy to find once you start star hopping. And remember, Alpharats? This star not only marks Pegasus's flank, but it also marks the head of the beautiful Princess Andromeda. She looks like a long, stretched out letter A. So, the Big Dipper will point you to a ton of stars and constellations. First, follow the end of the spoon to Polaris, then on to the W, Cassiopeia, then to the Great Square, Pegasus, and now that you can find the North Star, you'll never be lost again. Keep, Keep looking, looking up. up.